Greetings. Welcome once again to H2HDI. I am uh, Meneka Mia, my Hebrew name, and Dr. Robert Gonzalez, the name of the Collegian Scholary, those that are seeking for higher understanding. We thank you for viewing and listening, and tonight's terabyte, remember, the attitude to have is we are terrors to evil, terrors to terror itself. You are a terror, a threat, and a revenger of light in the kingdom of darkness. The enemy has tried to set us up, and this is why we've got the, the lunar, the sun, uh, we got the Gregorian, we got the Roman, we got the normal, we got the Jewish, we got all these interpretations on how to uh, celebrate Sabbath, uh, how to be committed, and, uh, and then, you know, if you strike a fire, light a match, go to the store for water for the family that's coming on Shabbat, uh, those that are so, uh, you know, so indoctrinated, curse and judge all the others. And Abraham was told by the Father that uh, those that curse you, I'll curse them, and those that Baruch you, I'll Baruch them. So here we are, we're faced with a dilemma, and, and it's not a bad dilemma, it's a good dilemma, because you will be um, once again challenged to go to the Scripture, to find Scripture uh, concerning the tithe, concerning the offering, concerning your giving. You know, Corinthians talks about a cheerful giver, not one that gives grudgingly. And then it never said about a tenth. It said to give as you, uh, how you commit in your heart. So let it be a heartfelt giving. Okay, so what we're doing, what we're trying to once again get deeper in Scripture, deeper in our commitment to Torah, because Torah is to liberate us. Torah is an act of love towards the Creator. I love Him more than I love my wife. I love Him more than I love myself. And this is why I've come to learn that for me to get on the tree and identify myself to the death that He died, to the burial that He was buried in, to the resurrection that He rose in, I must see myself in that finished work so that I can apply scripture that will bring towards me the Baruch because what a man soweth, that's what he will reap. So if you're with me tonight, uh, we will share some scripture. We will share some uh, principles that uh, we hope here at House to House we will live by. And, and here again, there's no condemnation to them that walk after the spirit, not after the flesh. Because see, a lot of us, uh, Dr. Arthur Bailey has a good uh, uh, CD on the things that will trip you up in the Jewish uh, customs and rituals. So if you want to look at that, go to his uh, website and look it up. But there's over a hundred and something different trips <laughs> and uh, I don't want to trip I don't trip too long uh, and quite often uh, because of all the different things that you learned in scripture and one thing I'm learning I was listening and being taught today by the Ruach and listening to some other authors and they said one thing that is so traditional our flesh our soul controls us so much while the speaker speaking we're watching uh, we're doing this we're doing that and we never learn how to shut our soul down to really listen to what Yeshua is saying. All day I've been quiet so I can hear what he's trying to tell me to tell you that is looking, observing, and trying to catch me. Because see, that's the instrument of the enemy. He's the accuser of the brethren. And we're to be kadosh. We're supposed to be set apart. So tonight at Galatians chapter 6, we're going to go right there to Galatians chapter 6. And we're going to see a few more basic kingdom principles that are in our handout that we give. So we can apply and walk this walk of the Spirit. Amen. It's a conscious act. You and I have to consciously move into a realm of I am. And when you say I am going to follow you, look who shows up. I am. So I am causes to push you from the back and pull you from the front as he's sandwiching you on all sides. So be by root tonight and just be still and know that he is Yah. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I thank all of you for watching and for listening and set your mind on him. 
Do like the Philippians did, setting their hearts on him, looking unto the author and developer and finisher of their emuna, looking unto those things that were pure and good and honest. Those are the things they learned of Shiliak Saul. So I say to you tonight, let's place it and put it together. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, let's open up. Hallelujah. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So we're tempted daily to talk crazy, to, uh, you know, to curse ourselves, to pre-empty ourselves, to make none and void a promise of the Father because we're not operating at certain kingdom principles. Verse 2, bear ye one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Mashiach. So the law there is Torah, the Torah Mashiach. He's wanting you just like he showed us the pattern that he would bear our sin. You know, he was given past, present, and future and he bore the sins of all men man period and when he went to uh golgotha's hill that's where he got the victory for all of us he had restore us and how because he let blood flow the father was looking for the blood of a lamb a spotless lamb and that was his son yeshua hamashiach and verse three if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing he's deceived himself and you know the walk that we're walking it's all by him you know you're going to make mistakes. You're going to blame others and blame yourself. But you need to come to a place where there, don't be deceived. Don't deceive yourself that you got it together. Because, you know, we're all a work in progress. We are his handy. We're created in Mashiach. And if he's doing the work in you, you're going to be a modeled son with the attributes of your father and your elder brother, Yeshua HaMashiach. <laughs> that kind of even rings in my heart. Anyway, let every man, verse 4, let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. See, so if you're real with yourself and you know what you do and you know what you don't do in the sight of him, you're already walking uh, without being condemned and without being under condemnation because you're really open and naked unto him according to Hebrews 4 and 13. For chapter 4 verse 13 you're open and naked unto him and we go to him to see if we what we do do we inquire of him well you and I got to come to that place of maturity everything we do uh, here at the house we're trying to practice and move to the next dimension we never operated in first fruits oh, even though we built our first fruits from our own commitment and now we want to honor the Father by the first fruits on the feast, Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles. And I bet there's something hidden underneath all the veneer of what we classify as a son. You know, I'm a son and I've kept it. I'm a son and I didn't keep it. I'm a son and I don't really who care. And so you have to come to a commitment as a son and then apply the practicals. Why? Because it's important to live in the Baruch. That's why as he says, I'll give you your daily bread. Unless you seek him, you don't have daily bread. Unless you open up your pay to speak to your heavenly father, <laughs> your Abba or your Avinu, uh, you're not going to have something that will keep you throughout the day. Okay, let's read on. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. And you've heard the preaching of all the teachers in the faith camps. Oh, I'm giving you spiritual, so you sow your seed. You sow your money. It really it was for the Levitical priest, but we're not under Levitical law no, no longer. We're under the Melchizedek law. So now everybody's supposed to give as he cares to give and how his heart, his commitment to give is instead of demanding a tenth and demanding a tenth and demanding a tenth. You know how we preach it, a tenth for every realm. I remember one of my apostle friends, we had an offering for everything. I mean, it was an hour long speech and we had an offering for the carpet, an offering for, you know, this, an offering for the chair, an offering for uh, the new tithes. And the, I mean, everything and anything. And we prayed and, 
and I never seen it in scripture so that's why I'm going back to these things and we need to rehearse them in our hearing because faith cometh by hearing and hearing is what's going to keep us uh, just a few uh, weeks ago we did the terabyte of uh, MU9 cast out your faith away because it brings great recompense of reward so you have to operate it you have to exercise MU9 let's go on let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things be not deceived Say that to yourself. I didn't say out loud. Be not deceived. Say that to yourself. And you know why you're saying it? Because you're speaking to your soul. You're speaking to your soul and your soul has two entities abiding within. Uh, it's like the bears, the three bears. Who's been sleeping in my bed? And so there's the suke and there's the nefesh. Which one are you speaking to and saying, be not deceived? See, your suke will say, I'm not deceived. I know what I'm doing. And your nefesh will say, yeah, I probably was deceived. Help me to get right and, be, uh, and come under the word so I could see truth. Amen? Okay, be not deceived. Yah is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. What you sow... In light of understanding, what you sow in light of revelation, what you sow that is inspired by the uh huh, the Malachim, the set apart messenger, because the Ruach will come, because that's the function that he has to come and to quicken and make you alive. You shouldn't be lacking if you're a son. You shouldn't be lacking unless the only reason we lack is there's something not right concerning the way we approach our father. If you don't spend time with him, how do you expect your seed to be barut? If you don't spend time with him, that's why covenant, Sabbath, Shabbat is so important. He says, one day, spend it with me. One day. Master yourself to commit yourself to me. One day, shut yourself down all day and listen and you'll hear me speak because that was the day that I chose to be still and hear myself speak to me. And when he did, you know what happened. He had a relationship with himself to create himself and the word became flesh and abide with him. And in the beginning was the word and the word was with Yah and Yah was the word. So he had to be still to hear that for him to manifest what he heard. Why? Because every thought becomes an idea and every idea takes on matter and every matter matters. So tonight we're going to read how to function as a son in the kingdom. All right, let's read on. There shall be also for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So whatever you sow, that verse needs to come alive to you. Whatever you sow, you can sow a fast by fasting something that you like. You can sow a fast by not speaking a certain word that you always speak. You can fast and delight yourself in him. According to Isaiah 58, there's things that we fast and they're supposed to be for his pleasure, not your own pleasure. But of course, here we again, like if I like Starbucks, then I need to cut Starbucks loose for that day. Why? Because I'm preparing myself for Passover. Passover is coming. And so this is why we prepare. You fast. Why? Because you want to be a lamb without spot and wrinkle. Basically, the lamb already came and he took away the sin of the world. And he was, yeah, he was slain before the foundations of the world. So there's two positive things that you and I need to meditate on so that you can walk this walk without any condemnation. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. See, the corruption that you're reaping doesn't come instantly, doesn't come in a year, doesn't come in two years. It's a gradual decay. And if you're still living in lack, it's because you were decaying from the beginning. The way you do it is by closing all doors, repenting. Do you know that you can redeem your seed? <laughs> I know you don't know that, but you do know that. But you can redeem your seed. And it costs you another 5% according to Leviticus. Yeah, in the book of Leviticus, the 27th chapter. Let's read that real quick and we're done. 
because I just got the hand single from Josh and Leviticus. Hallelujah. Chapter, uh, what did I say? 30, 29, 30, 31. It's the last chapter of Leviticus. Let me see. Okay. And uh, it's good to have the scripture because we got to live by it. Leviticus chapter, uh, there it is, 30. I mean, verse 30, 27, 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of thy seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is Yahuwah's. It is Kadosh unto Yahuwah. And if a man will at all redeem, ought he his tithes, he shall add a fifth part thereof. So if you haven't been Baruch, and you've been planting seed, you need to repent and consider what that scripture says. If you believe it, see, this is our problem. Well, I don't live under the law no more. I'm exempt from that. It's not. It's a lifestyle. A son, according to Yeshua, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you have been born again, and you have been born from above, because born again is not the same as being born from above. Born again is you're transferring and you have Christian virtues. But born again is you have his DNA. And why am I saying that? Because here's the fact. He wouldn't have put this in the scripture if he wouldn't have not known that his sons and daughters were going to yeah, mess up on how to give, when to give, and how not to give, and how never to give. And Do I give on the Sabbath? Do I not give on the Sabbath? Do I give as a priest? Do I give to the poor? Do I give to my family? Do I buy myself a pair of shoes? Do I go to the store and buy food and, sh and water for the saints that are coming on Sabbath? Do I crack a match? <laughs> you know, all those little things, according to Scripture, you're going to pay. But if you see it from an heart, from the heart, and you're committed to him by the heart, a lot of those things the Father knows you're doing it as unto him. The reason why we all share and we celebrate food and we eat one with another is because we're doing it as unto him. So here's a catch that you can catch. You can redeem yourself by the blood, but you can redeem your seed that you've given out of order by getting in order and just adding to your seed what you see. Now, don't take it from me. You go to the scriptures and take everything that the, that the scripture talks about a tithe, Malachi. You know the book of Malachi. What is about the book of Malachi? Chapter 3 and 4, one talks about a cursed giving because their, <laughs> their animals were cursed. Why? Because they were blemished. And yet the father asked for a lamb without spot, a bull that was right, a bullocks, and then a goat. So tonight, your terabyte is to redeem yourself by the blood and redeem your seed by the tithe. What tithe? Well, I think if you study this, you'll learn what kind of tithe that is. It's called the tithe of redemption. Until we see each other again, shalom. I pray that this be something that you will think about and consider in your prayer time. May Yeshua HaMashiach provoke you unto righteousness, keep you in the day of the storm, and you will reap the benefits. Shalom.